Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, it's time for another reloading chat. So I'm going to resize some brass, and I'm going to discuss an article I just read, which I'll link below for you guys, uh, discussing a white paper the ATF just released. And one of the things this white paper included is the fact that uh, the AR-15 is now kind of the norm for hunting. Uh, this is no longer like what the media tries to call it an assault rifle, and they're saying, look, it really isn't. Uh, the AR-15 is really a modern sporting rifle now. It's not what people are, are thinking that it is, what the leftists and the media and everyone think that it is. That's not what it is. It has become the norm as a hunting weapon and a sporting weapon. That is actually what it is. And it's because so many people now hunt with the AR-15 and so many people do various types of competitive shooting with the AR-15. And I don't mean just one type of shooting contest. Uh, it's actually involved in multiple types of shooting contests. I'm talking everything from multi-gun like three-gun all the way up to long-range precision shooting. Uh, I mean, it is used in thousand-yard competition now. So the, uh, dramatically different styles of shooting, a uh, wide variety of hunting applications in addition to being home defense and everything else. That, that, that is actually the role that this weapon plays in the market now. And so they're talking about, hey, look, I mean, there's a lot of things we need to deregulate. They're even talking about in this white paper a little bit about uh, suppressors and everything. Uh, because some high ups in the ATF have publicly announced that they honestly suppressors aren't that big of a deal that we should consider deregulating them. So even some of the people within the ATF are saying, hey, uh, some of these regulations don't really make sense anymore. And it's interesting that even the ATF is now saying uh, the AR-15 is basically a hunting and sporting rifle today. And they state that the reason we're seeing a rise in their use in these uh, mass shootings, which are still relatively rare, is not because the AR-15 is being selected because it's the perfect weapon for it. It's being selected because it's so popular now. Because it's popular, they're everywhere. So if a different weapon was more popular and filling the same niche, that weapon would be used instead. That it's not special that it's being selected. It's just its popularity um, that is causing it to be used for that. Uh, just like its popularity is causing it to be used for everything else. Uh, again, it's a very, very common, extremely common hunting and competitive shooting weapon now. Um, that's just the nature of the way the industry has gone. Now, the reason that's happened is why I've explained before. This is what happens in a capitalist system. And this is what happens when something gets deregulated. And people say, what, what do you mean? Because the AR-15 was introduced as a military weapon, uh, what does that mean? That means that the patents had to be released. When something is going to be put up to be used for military contracts, people aren't allowed to hold patents on those weapons anymore. They have to release their patents so that other people can attempt to build it and compete with them uh, as a contractor for the military. And that's why the, uh, the ownership of the contracts for the military's uh, M4s and M16s and everything has changed several times because different firearm manufacturers have uh, outbid and beat other companies for building these rifles while still using the exact same design. Uh, and that's the thing. The reason it is so popular is because it has been uh, deregulated in that sense. You have a standardized modular platform that doesn't hold a patent on it anymore. And that freed the entire industry, every single company out there to manufacture it. And once they manufacture it, it's a modular system. Guess what happens? That's what everyone uses. And it's, that's exactly what would happen in the United States here if... Glock or the Smith & Wesson LMP or something, its patent was completely removed, all right? Any of these popular handguns, you would probably see that design uh, become even more prevalent in the industry. Now, we know Glocks are already the most common uh, because the aftermarket's also picked up on that also, and they offer so many parts for them, but it's still a patented firearm. Uh, it would become even more popular in certain ways, potentially, if uh, the patents were dropped and everyone could technically make Glocks. Uh, that's what you've seen happen with the AR-15. And because it's a modular system, there's been enormous amounts of innovation to make aftermarket parts and modifications for it. Well, what happens when you take a modular platform that can have parts changed around really easily? Because that's what they wanted in the field. The design is designed to be field stripped, taken apart easily in the field. And it's designed to be able to have different attachments and things changed on it. 
Um, this is very, very useful for the military because people the, in the field can reset up their weapons. They can strip them down, change components, or before they go on different missions, uh, the armorers there can swap the weapons around. They can swap things in them. They can make changes that are specific to the needs of that mission. Well, it's the same thing uh, when you think about civilian type missions. Hunting could be seen as a mission. Different types of competitive shooting are missions. They have operational capacities. There are things that make uh, different parts better than others for a specific given application. Well, you have a modular system that was designed to do that uh, for the military. It no longer had patents, so everyone can make it and everyone can make parts for it. What that did is it created a market in the U.S. for a modular rifle. A well-proven, battle-proven, extremely reliable system with no patent on it now that everyone can manufacture. Uh, and when it did that, now you have every company, because it's a set standard, have everything set to similar specifications. Parts are interchangeable because all the threads and things are cut to similar sizes. All the holes are the same sizes. The parts where they connect to each other are basically the same sizes for every single company making it. Well, what that does, that allows the aftermarket to develop parts that work on 30 different companies' guns. The same part works on 30 different manufacturers' rifle. That means anyone can buy any of them. They can swap parts between manufacturers. They can swap everything around. It turned them into the ultimate uh, Lego system, basically, or a lot of people call AR-15s Barbie dolls for men. Uh, but they're really, because you can accessorize them, but they're really like Legos. Everything can be swapped around. That gives you the ability to build a rifle based upon the same platform that can do whatever you want. You can tune the weapon and change everything around on the weapon to fit every single niche and application that you have. So you could take the same set of receivers uh, potentially and do anything with it from being a, a SBR, home defense, close quarters weapon, uh, to being a varmint hunting weapon, to different styles of hunting, different calibers, different types of barrel lengths, different types of uh, recoil reduction systems, different types of gas systems. Uh, you can tune this weapon to do whatever you want, whether it's thousand yard precision shooting, or defending your home up close, or hunting elk, hunting smaller deer, hunting hogs, all the way down to hunting small game like uh, coyotes, like groundhogs. It's an extremely versatile weapon. It is probably the single most versatile firearm currently known to man. And it's because the capitalist system got its hands on a standardized, unpatented platform that's battle proven and proven to be rugged and durable and effective in a, in a wide variety of environments uh, because it had to be designed for the military. So you now have a weapon system that's completely interchangeable in which tons of companies make custom parts for it. And literally you can have three different AR-15s, even if you don't want aftermarket parts, you can buy three different AR-15s for different designs from different companies and swap parts around between your three rifles to uh, set each one up to do different things that you want it to do. Uh, it, it's like the ultimate plug and play. And because of that, you can do that. It has made it so popular because of the versatility. You can set up your AR to do any type of sporting or hunting that you want to do for the most part, with few exceptions. All right, that is the beauty of the system. And that has made it insanely popular. And that's the reason it's so popular. So for people who don't understand, you'll have uh, leftists or people who don't know a lot about guns who don't understand the fascination with the AR-15. That's what the fascination is. It's an unregulated item from as far as patents go that's modular and interchangeable. That created an entire industry around customizing this weapon and building it to do anything that you want it to do. It is, it is insanely versatile. It's insanely versatile for every single form of sporting application. And if you don't like something about the way the weapon performs for your specific sporting application or hunting application, you can buy a couple parts and change it. You can completely change the nature and the function of the rifle, the way it handles, the way it shoots, everything with a few part upgrades or swaps. Uh, so it allows for fine tuning and customization beyond anything that most of us are familiar with. That made it popular. 
and that's unavoidable. And it doesn't matter that it's the AR-15 had another rifle come along, had, say, the SCAR light come along uh, in the same environment 25 years ago, and the exact same thing been done in the U.S. instead of the AR-15, we would all be shooting SCAR lights uh, for the exact same reason. It's not that it's the AR-15 that's special. It was the environment uh, in which it was introduced that allowed an enormous customization industry to come out. And so that's what's going on there. That is why uh, it's so popular. That's why people are obsessed with it. That's why so many people own them. That's why there's like 6 million of them now in civilian hands. Or it might be 8 million now. Uh, because of that reason, and it's not going to change anytime soon. And that's what the ATF is acknowledging, that this weapon is not being purchased and utilized for the purpose that uh, gun regulators think that it is, because they don't actually understand, because they'll say, oh, it's not even a hunting weapon. It actually is. It is probably, as of right now, the most popular model of hunting rifle inside the United States. It is probably number one at this point, and if it's not, it's really, really close and for sporting competitive type shooting as well. Uh, so that has become the actual role of the weapon. And it's all because of a, an unregulated capitalist system that's created that. And so even they're saying, hey, this thing is people don't understand what it's actually being used for. There's a lot of misconceptions, but here's the real data. Here's our white paper. Here's what's actually going on with this weapon and why people are buying it, why people are using it, what they're actually using it for. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.